I think if you want to move to Ghana, you have mm -hmm. to really plan strategically. Okay. My problem is the prices of land in the areas where we get high-end international schooling mm -hmm. are just outrageous. Ridiculous. I'm not willing to pay a million dollars. I don't even have a million dollars yes. to pay just for land. No. Hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode. And this is the Diaspora Transition episode where we interview people who move back from the diaspora and currently living here on the continent. And on this episode, we have here someone very special. You might know her. If you don't know her, you are under a rock. So without further ado, Anna Achampon. Yes. Welcome on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. But this one is diaspora and then back to diaspora. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your video. Before we yeah. get into that, you, you moved back with your family. Yeah. That was when? 2000 and to Ghana, you mean? Yes. 2019. 19. And then let's talk about how it started, why you guys decided sure. to, to do that. But before we get into it, briefly introduce yourself to the people who watch, who are watching, who don't know who you are. Sure. Hello, everybody. Channel. My name is Anna Champong. I'm half Ghanaian, half Dutch. I have two kids and a wonderful husband. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. And they have a YouTube channel called Anna, the Achampon family. Now it's Anna Achampon. Yes. Which I will display it on the screen. But tell us, yeah. how did that journey started for you? Why did you decide, let's go to Ghana? Okay. So both my husband and I are half Ghanaian, half Dutch. Okay. But we were raised by our Dutch mothers. And mm -hmm. our fathers didn't really have a lot of influence on our upbringing. So we'll see them, like maybe on the weekends. And my husband, he will not see his dad even that much, right? Mm. So when we were growing up, we felt uh, a lack of like belonging and a lack where of self. Where am I coming yeah, from? Where are you from? Like I would visit Ghana every every other year, mm -hmm. but my dad would have me very secluded. Like I would not leave the compound. Wow. I would not go anywhere alone. So my image of Ghana is just to be around family. And mm -hmm. as much as I loved it, I felt it was a little boring at a mm. point. So I think when I started being 14, I said, dad, you can leave. I'm not going. I'm not going. <laughs> so then um when my husband and i uh felt pregnant mm -hmm. i wanted my daughter to meet my grandma okay. that was very important to me mm -hmm. so i mm -hmm. came back to ghana with him and my daughter who was like one and a half years old okay and then at one point um of course we did all the family rounds and then one point my auntie said oh but you have to chill small mm -hmm. leave the baby with me and go okay mind you i never left my child with anybody Hello. but yeah. this auntie i liked her a lot so then I think we went to a club. Mm -hmm. Is it Bloomba or mm. I don't know. <laughs> That's why I said, hey, Ghana is not boring <laughs> at all. <laughs> we really chilled and I've got to see so much of the country just with my husband and okay. my dad never showed me. Wow. So I was really, really happy and excited. And I think that's when the first thought came that hey, mm -hmm. maybe I would like to live here once. Wow. So yeah. you, you started from like coming for a visit in the initial stage yeah. with your husband. Yeah. And then um, we went back to mm -hmm. the Netherlands yeah and then you you kind of miss the experience you, you so had. much <laughs> <laughs> so every year I would think oh can we go for vacation mm -hmm. can we go for vacation but then my husband is really adventurous so he wanted okay. to go to other countries rather okay. than back to Ghana okay um, so I think when my daughter became five or six she started questioning like why do I have curly hair or why am I black and what other languages do we speak? Mm -hmm. And we couldn't really answer all the questions that she was having. Wow. So that's when we said, why not take a sabbatical year okay. and then try to move to Ghana with us as a family to learn as a whole. Like wow. we were learning and the kids will be learning. That's so amazing. that was the initial idea. Of wow, that's family. good. Yeah. So you wanted her to, to kind of, we wanted your kids to know where they came from, yeah. their culture and then everything. You yeah. brought them. Yeah, I think it's so important because we, didn't grow up with that okay but it feels like when you don't grow up with that you can't reciprocate that to your exactly. children so exactly. we said we will all learn as a family and that's okay. why we came with the year of return okay yeah. and then that was 2019 which yeah. month um we came in june okay june yeah. and i saw you do a lot of videos with your family yeah, amazing yeah, videos yeah. and then Thank i saw you. your husband yeah. also helping you with the, the video and everything yeah. and I, I said i've been watching you i was in china at that time oh, nice. and i was i was watching all your videos and i mm -hmm. thought you were doing great Thank how you. you were teaching a lot of people how cost of living is what you have to do and, and so forth yeah. and i think it's very great if you guys are watching she has a youtube channel i'll leave the name here go check out what she's uh, what she has done to, to understand what I'm trying to say. So, what point did you say, okay, because you moved back, but mm -hmm. we get there, mm -hmm. but what point did you be like, hmm, maybe we should give it a second thought, maybe go regroup and come back again? So, okay, let me take you to the next mm -hmm. step. 
our initial idea was to stay for eight months to a year. That mm -hmm. was like the visa we got, right? Okay. But then COVID hit that time, and mm. it was very bad, especially in Europe. Like, yes. it was so bad. Mm -hmm. So my dad, uh, my mom was calling us, like, don't come back, stay in Ghana, because the president closed off the borders, and there, there was almost no COVID here. Exactly. Like, we were still scared, but I mean, we went to the beach, we would still go out, we were wow. swimming, we were really living. You're in pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> we were still living. So my mom said, it's way worse here. Here, so please stay there. Mm -hmm. So that's when we decided, okay, maybe we should try and actually live here mm -hmm. for some time. Okay. But then I think Accra is um, not really ready for mm -hmm. families. Mm -hmm. Like, let's talk about it. Accra needs city planning, mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that makes it hard for you to live here with kids. Like, exactly. if I'm just alone, if just my husband and I, I don't no mess. Stress. It's okay sitting in traffic, but my kids, at some point, we were taking out food. For uh, to pick up my son from school, mm -hmm. have him eat in the car, oh. and then go to soccer practice. There's and no time because of the traffic. soccer practice was like the the place to the soccer practice was just like ten minutes. Mm -hmm. But sometimes he would sit in traffic for one and a half hour, wow. and he would go like, "Oh no, I want to play ball. I want to play ball." Mm -hmm. So he would be so very frustrated. stressed, frustrated. Mm -hmm. And then also, I think. Um, my kids, because we come from a Muslim background, mm -hmm. they're so used to having play dates. Okay. People here don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> they feel like I'm not going to sit in traffic just for kids mm -hmm. to play, and I, I understand mm -hmm. that. So at a point, it got too much for them, just playing by themselves all the time. And my oh. kids, oh, they like to fight too much. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so we were like, no, it's, it's, it's just getting too much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was more of the frustrations your kids were going through. Because the initial stage, they, they loved it. I saw them oh, in the they videos. Loved it. They loved it. And then... But I think we shouldn't have moved. Okay. So we live in a rented house in Ajingana. Okay. But then um, my husband got a job prospect and we moved to an apartment. Mm -hmm. The apartment was not for them. Oh. Even the apartment was I saw you guys close. were living in a house. Yes. And then you moved in. So the space yes. became a problem. The space became a problem. They couldn't play. And then we thought that, oh, it, it's, it's not that bad because we can mm. drop them. We can take them out to the park and all of that. Okay. But traffic wise, it's just not possible. Okay. You are open book, right? Yeah. Why did you left the house? Like, house. because it was huge, honestly, yeah, you had swimming pool everywhere. Well, it was a little too big, that's what okay. we found. Okay. Um, like, when you when you don't use a space, mm -hmm. cockroaches and all type oh, of things, they come. And I can't handle box, like, I can't handle box. I so, I think at one point, it, it was just like, what do we do? Mm -hmm. Like, can we maybe let somebody stay there? But we also didn't want to give somebody okay. a place with their kids. And mm -hmm. it was just getting too, too big. Mm -hmm. And then, I think another point was, oh yeah, the job. The job was closer to the house, so that's okay. why, why we... Uh, job? Yeah. Your husband's job. Yeah. He had a, a job. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Wow. Very interesting. So let's get into it. Ha what happened when you left the house and then you moved to the apartment? The apartment was much better. Like okay. there were no no bugs, no, okay. nothing there. Okay. Um, but I think space wise. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not for kids living okay. in an apartment. I okay. think when you live in maybe New York or London, an apartment is so good because you can go out, you can go to parks. You don't think about mm -hmm. an apartment being mm -hmm. bad for kids. Mm -hmm. But this oh, it was definitely it was not, not for the kids. No. Wow. And so, also in airport, there's no nowhere to play for kids. Mm -hmm. Like my kids love to play with any type of kids. Is it local, foreign? It doesn't matter for them as long as it's kids. Okay. So in Ajayungana, where we live, there were lots of kids playing on the streets. Mm -hmm. And in the airport, we didn't have that. So I, I think they missed that as well. We'll get more into that. But what was the challenges that you faced mm -hmm. when you moved back? completely because visiting uh -huh. is different very different than <laughs> back. i think the first challenge that uh was just too much for anybody in our family mm -hmm. is the way that they build here in ghana okay like every other day there was a problem like if it's not plumbing from one toilet mm -hmm. maybe the lights will not be working uh, working in one room and then when somebody comes and face the light all of a sudden ac stopped working <laughs> so every day my husband had to fix one problem wow. after another and then if it's fixing a problem, it's, it's not bad if you know that a person will come and fix it, does the job, mm -hmm. and then you're done. Exactly. But no, he doesn't do the job. Another mm. problem starts. Wow. So that's also where, because the house was so big, okay. we couldn't maintain all the problems that were coming. Okay. So at one point, we thought maybe we just buy land and build our own house to make okay. sure that we don't, ha don't have that problem. Which is a good idea. Very good idea. Mm -hmm. But this was the biggest problem. My kids mm -hmm. need... Uh, 
let's say how do you high-end international schooling that's mm -hmm. what they are used to okay so the quote-unquote normal Ghanaian schools I think what the um, government school no 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 we didn't try, <laughs> we didn't try that. <laughs> I think um, let's say mid mid-range Ghanaians they, they bring their kids to that okay. type of school okay. that is the school we want them the private to go to schools. initially yes the normal private schools mm -hmm. Um, because we want them to be surrounded by Ghanaian kids. That okay. was our aim. Okay. But unfortunately, the teaching there, um, academic-wise, is very good, mm -hmm. but they still beat kids. Oh. They still shout at them. Uh, they were caning, and oh, it was just yes. too much for our kids. They couldn't handle that. Mm. Like, they were so scared. Really? Of I thought they school. don't do that anymore. I thought so, too. And I talked with the school, like, please, can you stop it? And they said, oh, but we won't beat yours. Don't worry. No, but you but beat other kids. That, yeah, yeah, it was so scary for them. I understand. So we, we took them out of that school and placed them in a high-end international mm -hmm. school. Okay. But the high-end international school, academic-wise, is good. They don't cane them or nothing, but I feel like... There's not enough Ghanaian kids surrounding them. And okay. Oh, they are, so it's a high end, mm -hmm. but then there were not Ghanaian kids. There were, but not too much. Not too much. So, so there were foreign kids? Almost all foreign oh, kids. Wow. And I'm not saying that's bad, but I okay. feel like they didn't teach them any Ghanaian language. Mm. Uh, they were not really surrounded by lots of Ghanaian kids. And the kids from the high end international schools are very spoiled. Very, what do you mean for? Let's let's talk about <laughs> okay. it. Okay, I think this was also COVID time, right? Okay. So um, uh, you weren't supposed to bring, uh, you couldn't eat food from the canteen. Mm -hmm. So most of the kids would get like Burger King or KFC wow. during lunch, and the driver will come and drop it, drop at, it. The, at the door. Wow. I won't wow. mind giving my kids KFC maybe mm -hmm. once or twice a month, okay. but definitely not every day. Not every day. And definitely not at school. Okay. So there was one point where my son would start saying that he will not eat the food that I sent with him because he wants to eat KFC because his classmates will also eat KFC. I <laughs> see. I see. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It so was difficult. that became a problem. Yes. Because I, I found it a problem. Yeah. Yes. See. And then it was not even okay healthy. So you were very concerned. I also don't think it's healthy. No, yes. No. Yes. Wow. Now, how is it like, you know, moving back with your kids? Because I've, I've interviewed other people mm -hmm. who are very comfortable living alone yeah. and they seem to, you know, kind of handle their pressure easily. Mm -hmm. But how is it like? People are watching, they are, they are like, listen, I want to move back to Africa. I've mm -hmm. seen your videos. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired. But how is it like if I come with my kids? The okay. frustrations. Well, this episode is brought to you by Terra Nova, Home for the Elderly. And uh, this space is created by a lady from the diaspora or people from the diaspora who understand the needs of the diaspora and moving back from the U.S. and other uh, places around uh, the globe to Ghana and currently living here. Most people came back uh, retirement for their retirement. And um, sometimes, you know, not having a family member here is sometimes challenging. Um, if you are sick or the elderly at your home is sick and you have to go to work, you can't just leave them alone. So you need to, you know, find places like Terra Nova Homes where you can, you know, um, you know, sign up, you know, they have nurses who are certified also in, in CPR training, very friendly, who can take care of, of um, the elderly with passion, not just anyone just wanting to just do it for the money, but people who are, you know, dedicated with a craft and everything. And they are located in Tema Community 20, very close to medical facilities. So you don't have anything to worry, you know, very beautiful place. And yeah, check them out. Their name would be on the screen. Their telephone numbers will also be on the screen and also in the description as well as their GPS or their landmark, so it will be very easy to look at them. So the name is Terra Nova Home for the Elderly. Don't forget, and you have to check them out. I think if you want to move to Ghana, you have mm -hmm. to really plan strategically. Okay. My problem is the prices of land in the areas where we get high-end international schooling mm -hmm. are just outrageous. Ridiculous. I'm not willing to pay a million dollars. I don't even have a million dollars yes. to pay just for land. Land, yeah. And I think those prices are just not fair mm -hmm. because there's still no infrastructure, there's still going to be... See, when you build your house, mm -hmm. when you pay a million dollars for land, right, mm -hmm. in East Lagos or mm -hmm. any type of you're area not live in it. school, you're not going to know what's happening next to you. Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden, somebody might build a nightclub next to you. And exactly. what did you do with your exactly. money? So that's also something that I'm very cautious mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. and which makes it very challenging mm -hmm. because 
I would not prefer to live in Accra. I would yeah. prefer to live in Ebury or some place. But then it's quiet. facilities, education would be a problem. in the school, I don't know what to do. Okay. So that is, um, I think, my biggest challenge. Okay. I think living in Ghana is, is so nice, so, so nice. Yeah. Especially when you have the money to build the type of mm -hmm. uh, house and a style you that want. you want to. Okay. But then the schooling is going to be tricky. Yeah. What, what would you say you wish you knew uh, before moving back with your husband and kids? I wouldn't trade anything, actually. Okay. I think it was so good to go through all the struggles and mm -hmm. hassles we went through because oh, really? it taught us so much. So yes, much. Yes, wow. it definitely taught Share us them so one much. lesson like, that taught you to the audience watching. Mm. Very good question, man. Mm. One, one lesson. Because I've watched you for two years. Yeah. A plus and. You are very open. Yes. You share your challenges, no sugar coating, sure. the, the, the frustrations. I know sometimes it's too heavy, you can't put it on camera. Mm -hmm. But the, the, what you've shared so far is a lot that I think I just want people, to be real. I feel yeah. like a lot of us YouTubers are only showing the positive side of living exactly. in Ghana. But there's also a lot of challenges that come right. with that. And right. I don't want people to come here thinking it's all roses and mm -hmm. then saying like, ah, mm -hmm. I could have told Do you think us. you fall victim to those all oh, roses? Definitely. I think everybody <laughs> thinks that coming mm -hmm. and living here will be so easy mm -hmm. or uh, even cheap, but cheap. it's not. It's, it's not. so expensive. Now the dollar is now 10 cities. <laughs> it's the nana. Oh, wow. This, this is even crazy. And it's it hurting is. me, you know. Yeah. I mean, just yesterday I spoke to somebody selling pure water and they said the prices have increased. And I'm asking them, like, how many do you take yourself? Mm -hmm. He said he can't even drink one. No. It's now 50 pesos. I was and that is gonna cry. Yeah. Like how is somebody selling that water, not being able to drink it while being on the street in the heat the whole day? It's crazy. The whole day. It's crazy. So just he had to give him like what I had, and mm -hmm. it, he was always crying on the floor like that. I gave him mm -hmm. that type of money, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you think know. this economic crisis is really? I think it is creating a lot of um, poverty. In yes. the world. That's why I think the Global Festival, you were invited. Yeah. You get into that. You were invited by YouTube yeah. to in cooperation with the Global Citizen Festival. Yeah. And let's talk about that. But but you are advised to mm -hmm. the people um, on the earlier question mm -hmm. and then we can move to, to Global Citizen. I would say move move out of Accra. Don't settle okay. in Accra. Okay. Accra is so overrated, honestly. Mm. Of course we have all that you want here, but it's also so busy. Okay. So so busy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, wow. That's, that's if the infrastructure isn't a problem or school or things like that. I think that. everything will come. Ghana's okay. going to develop so fast, mm -hmm. especially if we find, find a new good leader, okay. Mr. Nana. <laughs> Shout out to Nana. <laughs> Let's talk about Global uh, Citizen Festival. Sure. YouTube, you got invited. Yes. You were chosen. I felt so honored, honestly. Tell me about it. So, uh, me sitting there in Holland thinking about, should I continue YouTube or not? Mm -hmm. Like, I quit YouTube for almost three months, mm -hmm. and get, getting back in that algorithm is so difficult. Ah, so, have to start sometimes from scratch. when I see my ads, I'm thinking, ah, is this what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. But then you remember that YouTube is not for the money because you like Legacy it. purpose. Yes. But I'm also struggling in regards to, first I had my family on and now it's all about me. Yes. So, I'm re I was really struggling in getting to know, like, Change of what niche. exactly should I do? Exactly. Yeah. So I'm still figuring that out. All of a sudden, I get this email that they want to come to uh, meet wow. me. Wow. And I say, oh, that, that was the only thing I needed. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you, you, you came to Ghana, you met a lot of creators. Yes. And uh, did you do any collaborations? Or yes, you... I did. Okay. One, no, two. 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 Unfortunately, wow. the time was a little challenging. Yeah, just two I think days. next time, please, let us have a few days YouTube, or please. a few more hours. <laughs> but I think that initiative was good because the industry is now growing and they've never done anything like that it's here. It's so amazing. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I've never... Actually, the time that we were here, I mm -hmm. felt a little bit lonely because I felt like, why is there no more creators, creators. in Ghana? I mm -hmm. felt like the space of us is so small. I think definitely Ghana, in regards to showbiz and all of that, they are so backwards. Yes. Like they need to step Far up behind. their game. Yeah. If you look at Nigeria, South Africa, what they put Even into Kenya. all of that, yes, they're, they're so far ahead. What do you think Ghana is lacking behind? I think there are so, so many good mm -hmm. influencers, okay. young, beautiful, mm -hmm. nice influencers, mm -hmm. and they are only using old people. Yeah. Like, we don't want to look at the old people anymore. <laughs> they, need, they need to like step up their game in mm -hmm. to not only influencers, but all, all content creators and use us. I mean, if you look at um, 
the boards of Rwanda, South mm -hmm. Africa, they are continuously inviting people to come to the continent. Exactly, yeah. Ghana. No sponsorship, nothing. You know, South Africa are paying Ghanaian content creators to come just to, to come yes. and advertise. And here we are doing all this work for free. free. If you ask them like, oh, please, could I go to a hotel mm -hmm. or can I go here? No, we should actually pay the hotel to and film. then also make yeah. content, which they are so crazy. It's ridiculous. Crazy. I can understand. And hmm, I think we will get there. Mm -hmm. Everybody will get there. I mean, let's talk about the global citizen, first of all. Sure. This program is about, you know, how to eradicate poverty, yeah. human, mm -hmm. uh, female uh, women empowerment and everything. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? And you know, being hosted here in Ghana, Accra, your, your home country, your mm -hmm. land, how does that make you feel and the impact you think that would make? Oh, I was so, so honored, mm. so honored, and so happy to meet other creators finally. Yeah. Because I feel the space in Africa is so big, but mm -hmm. we don't know each other. Exactly. And now that, that these connections have been made, it can only go bigger mm -hmm. and better. That's yes. true. And you were telling me that, ah, where are these people coming from? I didn't were know they in their any country? of them, any <laughs> of them. But this, this actually helps. It, this mm -hmm. actually helps so much. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you've, you've been here for two years, mm -hmm. you went back, and I've been seeing you coming back and forth, right? Yeah. Do you have plans of moving back? And <laughs> let's break the news to the people. Yeah. What, what is your mind state now in terms of content creating and how you take your channel forward okay. and what ideas you think? Because maybe someone is out there and they have ideas or whatsoever. Yeah. What is your stand now? So, um... I'm very um, happy mm -hmm. to the to the success we made, right? Okay. But that also comes with challenges. Like mm -hmm. I, um, especially in Ghana, a lot of people know us, mm -hmm. and sometimes I will send my kids uh, to play um, anywhere, park? and mm -hmm. I'll send them with my nanny, and then people would approach them. Oh. And I'm not thinking it's a bad thing because our followers are very nice and generous. Exactly. But sometimes it scares me. Yes. So that's why I, one of the main reasons I change it to Anna Champo. Mm -hmm. Um, right now, I feel like I want to travel within Africa with the family. So that's okay. one content that yeah, I'm good. really looking forward mm -hmm. to. But it's a struggle because my kids only get four vacations in a year. Okay. So I really have to plan it. Exactly. So that's one that I'm trying Sorry. to do now. Okay. And also, I don't think all African countries are safe yet to travel with. Hmm. So I'm, I'm still planning that out. Okay. In regards to other content, I'm just doing whatever I like hmm. and hoping that my audience will follow. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing I can well, do. I think they will follow because you, you kind of have a very honest touch to your channel mm -hmm. where, sorry to say, you don't bullshit. You just mm -hmm. go straight to the point. And I think you have a lot of experience to share to the people mm. out there. And then I see you are an adventurous person. Mm. You were saying in your video that I don't like staying at one. You were, you were a proud mother yes. at one point, but I think you fell off. Yeah. You felt like you were not motivated mm -hmm. doing that and you wanted to kind of break free to do what you're passionate about. Yeah. And I think that spirit, a lot of people watching mm -hmm. have similar feelings uh, mm -hmm. um, and they would, you know, kind of um, relate with that. So mm -hmm. I'll put that YouTube channel there. Sure. But let's let's dive into Ghana again, okay? Mm -hmm. You've you've seen everything here. You've you've gone through the ups and downs. People are watching. Can you give best three advice to for them to watch out if they are making a move? What should they know? What do you have to do uh, before they make the move to, okay. to Ghana? I think the best time to make the make the move to Ghana is if you have no kids or if you have young kids. Okay. So young kids can adapt to the system much more easily mm -hmm. than my kids could. Mm. And if you come in with kids who are already school abroad, it will be very difficult for them to settle. Okay. So that will make your uh, place of living limited to airport and East Lagoon, mm -hmm. which are one of the prime areas in real estate mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. comes with an, another cost. High, of li high cost of living. Yeah. So if you can come, uh, like I said, with young kids or mm -hmm. <laughs> no kids no yet, kids at all, yeah. your kids can adjust. Mm -hmm. um, the schooling here is so, so good. Academic-wise, they're on top. Right. Uh, when I uh, brought my kids back to the Netherlands, they even skipped a class because they were so far ahead. Really? Yes, yes. The academic is excellent oh, wow. here. It's good to hear that. That is odd. Yeah, it is. <laughs> what I feel uh, Ghana lacks is um, thinking out of the box. Mm. Kids are made to study, 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 but they are not really made to question. Okay. Like, um, my daughter is very good in math. And then sometimes uh, in, in the first school I put her, the teacher would sometimes get something wrong. Mm. And she would say, um, I'm sorry, sir, this was not the answer. Okay. He would scream like, are you mad? 
sister. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So, so she was made to not speak up okay. while she was thinking about okay. something. And this Ghana me. education system. This is Ghana okay. education system. Okay. okay. I think that is a problem. It is a problem. And that is, I think, the problem why Ghanaians are not made to speak up. And like be what's critical happening thinkers. right now in government, in government yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. We in the Netherlands or any European mm -hmm. country would never accept this kind yeah. of thing. There would have been protests everywhere. Everywhere protests, <laughs> rioting, breaking mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Ghanese are just quiet. But what they say is peace. There would be peace. Of course, what I want there to mm -hmm. be peace. But mm -hmm. you can't keep struggling. People can't even drink normal mm -hmm. water. Yeah. And you want peace? No, mm -hmm. the peace will come after. Mm -hmm. Now, the president said something. I don't want to be political, but he said it's because of the war happening in Ukraine and the okay. COVID. What do you think about that? Well, you know, I think it was BBC that launched mm -hmm. that during the pandemic, mm -hmm. Ghana is number one or is it number two inflation, the highest in the one. whole world. Number one. The world. <laughs> is that even possible? Like, yeah. come because on, what are we doing? Four months ago, the dollar was 5.6 or three months ago. Now it's double. We import everything. Yeah. That is the number one thing that needs to stop. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many resources mm -hmm. here. Our land is so fertile. Mm -hmm. We don't need to import nothing. Mm -hmm. We need to use what we have right now mm -hmm. and that will make the economy go faster. faster. But everything is about corruption. Giving mm -hmm. some contract to somebody, mm -hmm. another contract to mm -hmm. somebody. Come on, that's yeah. not prospering the country. You, you've worked in the West. You've had an experience. What were you doing there before you moved back or your career? I was a social worker. Social worker. Yeah. What have you learned so far that you think Ghanaian can adapt to kind of better our lifestyle in terms of social works and stuff like that based on your experience even when it comes to kids when it comes to all this um i think the the one thing that mm -hmm. will actually change the whole nation mm -hmm. is if we learn how to make kids critical thinkers okay let's talk about it from a young age you need to of course kids need to respect and i love that from mm -hmm. the culture but they also need to be able to speak up their mind okay and also know that, okay, you're able to think your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Your own thoughts are okay. Mm -hmm. We don't bash you when you say no. That's okay. it. So you are, you are supporting that you can talk back to your mom when she's speaking? <laughs> I think respectfully talk back, yes. Okay. Yes, I okay. think so. So you would you'd be totally be okay for your kids to talk back? They do. They, they do. do. Oh, yeah. they do. They and yeah, it's fine. Yes. Because it's, it helps their... Um, confidence in their mind. Yes, you know? yes. Okay. This is new. I think my African parents will understand this. Well. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, I like the conversation so far. If you are liking it too, please, I want you to like, share the video to friends and family. Comment down what you, are, you, you like about the video. And um, what would you say has been the greatest lesson you've learned so far since you've you know, moved back and everything, if I've not asked you already? Um, I think being African. Okay. Even though you're not born in Africa, mm -hmm. once you visit, Africa will be born in you. Okay, wow. Yeah. Well, I watched one of your videos where you were talking about racism in the Netherlands, where people had to paint their face black. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought that was crazy. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? Um, it's, a, it's a festival, I think a festivity like Santa Claus. Mm. Um, that's what they have in the Netherlands. Their Santa Claus is called Sinterklaas. Mm. And his helpers are not elves, but they are blackface, basically. Wow, so they are yeah. black people. Yeah. No, I mean, it's a caricature, caricature of the black person. So they are basically mimicking mm -hmm. and making him this jolly type of person who is not smart, who is not intelligent, wow. who is kids should be scared of. It's a very bad thing. What, does, what did that do to you as a child growing up in the Netherlands? I was really a lot, wow. especially during that December time. So mm -hmm. sometimes I would ask my mom not to send me to school okay. because I knew that would maybe pull my hair. What were some of the things they were things. saying to you? They would call me that person, like I would be the black-faced person. Wow. Yeah. But, you are considered black in the Netherlands. Yes. And you moved back to Ghana. Yeah. Are you considered black here too? I'm considered white. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere I belong. That, that's, I think, a mystery. Thing. So you it's get a Obroni thing too? Oh, okay, <laughs> How do you feel and how do you react to it? I don't like it, but mm -hmm. sometimes I respond that, oh, me and Bibini. But I'm actually okay with it. I, wow. Here, you feel the love, right? Mm -hmm. And in Holland, not at all. Did you felt accepted did your kids and husband felt accepted when they came to ghana wow i think ghana gave my daughter confidence that you can't take back from her anyway. wow yeah 
Wow. Well, I'm really happy to, to hear you say all these yeah, things. And I mean, I'm very excited to see what would come, you know, in the future. Mm -hmm. And now people are watching right from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. If you have a last message to them, what would that message be? I would say that keep watching my channel. Mm -hmm. We're going to explore other African countries. Mm -hmm. Ghana's lovely, but might not be ready for us. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they have 54, uh, 55 yes. countries in yes. the, the whole of um, Africa. Yeah. So you are very interested in visiting us, you said. Very, very, very. What like, country are you looking at? My number one that I'm looking at is Rwanda. Rwanda, okay. I think what they're doing is amazing. amazing. Mm -hmm. I think that military mm -hmm. guidance, that is what Ghana needs. Yes. Like, I'm so excited to like see what they have done and that the place is so clean, clean. Mm -hmm. and that they do um, clean up like uh, exercises. Yeah, with like everybody come cleans mm -hmm. up. I think it's amazing. I'm so excited to wow. go there. Yeah. Well, I see how excited you about it. You love about the cleanliness. If you have something yes. to change about Ghana, what oh, would you change? Oh, that's number one. <laughs> number one. Like it, it pains me so much. It mm -hmm. pains me so much because I feel like, and I don't feel like actually I know that mm -hmm. a lot of. Um, things that we call waste, like electronic waste or even clothing waste is being dumped here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But I'm feeling like, why is it all about money? Mm -hmm. Because the soil is actually being um, uh, attached by mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. And in a bad way, because if you look at Abu Bloshi market, mm -hmm. it is so, the smell that you uh, get there is terrible. Yes, you and get sick when you go there very, without a mask. Very. Mostly for um, foreigners so or crazy. people. Yeah. And then people actually sell their produce mm -hmm. and everything, and that hurts me so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. our soil is so rich, why are they spoiling it? Mm -hmm. Just because the West gives them contracts, yeah. place their dump. Mm -hmm. No, so bad, so wow. bad. So how do you intend to change it if you are given, let's say they chose you. Anna, mm -hmm. please, we need you to lead this movement. We want Agba Boloshi to be the cleanest place mm -hmm. more than Kigali, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. What will you do I'll call, I'll call Mr. Paul Kigali and say, please, <laughs> send, come and send your soldiers, I need help. No, honestly, I think the only way Ghana can actually change is mm -hmm. military force. Okay. Yes. Wow. Now, I want to give credit to your husband. Sure. What did your husband do to really help you um, start this journey mm -hmm. of being a content creator? And uh, I'll have my next question after you said mm -hmm. that. What, what do you think he, he did that really boost you or even helped you? In oh, anything? he helped me so much. Like, mm -hmm. he bought all the equipment. Mm -hmm. He'll be the guy right there standing behind, behind him. Okay. Wow. But as soon as I pull him in front, <laughs> oh, that's where trouble started. <laughs> he didn't want to be in front of the yeah. camera. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. Did, that, did that break your spirit knowing that? Um, he would not be joining you in the, in the video. It, it was difficult for me because okay. if you find like, I didn't start YouTube thinking I'll be a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. I just did it because I felt like I want to show people. Mm -hmm. Like when I told people, oh, I'm moving to Ghana for a sabbatical year, they'll be asking questions like, mm -hmm. oh, but what would you use for transportation? Do you even have water there? Mm -hmm. What if your kids die from malaria? Like wow. this type of questions that I feel like, what? This is 2019. Mm -hmm. Don't you have a different image of Africa? Yeah. yeah. So I felt like this is my motivation. Mm -hmm. And I made a YouTube channel just to show people like, oh, hi, I'm in shop right now. Mm -hmm. See, we have TVs, mm -hmm. we have Nivea, we mm -hmm. have everything. Exactly. I just wanted to show my mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So when, when that grew, I was like, oh my God, how are we going to do all this? Yes. Kevin, you need to help me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I wanted him to also be on the channel. Wow. And I think I... I forced him for a little while, oh. and he did that because he loved me. Yeah, I think he but looks, at one yeah. point, it was like, no, Too I just much. had to accept that it's not for him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I think he supported you, and then wherever he is, uh, thank you oh, for supporting very. him. Oh, very. He still does. He does. So yeah. when I told him about the idea that I want to travel within Africa, mm -hmm. he was very excited about okay, it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. What to YouTube? <clears throat> is YouTube a job? Do you think it should be considered as one? It is such hard work, such, such hard work. Mm. And I'm now turning it into my job. Yes, okay. Yes. So people saying you go get a proper job. I'm, I'm so angry at them. Honestly. <laughs> you know how much time and effort comes to shooting my videos, mm -hmm. editing my videos, mm -hmm. placing and just making sure you're on all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. So I think when leaving, mm -hmm. that's when I knew that, wow. Yeah. I spend so much time on YouTube. Exactly, exactly. So much time. Someone is yeah. watching you and they'll be like, I would love to, to be like you. Mm -hmm. I would like to be a YouTuber, move to Ghana, do this. Do you think it's worth it and they should they do it? 
They should definitely try, mm -hmm. but if you don't like doing YouTube, you can't do this as a job okay. because it takes so much time and effort. You need to really want it. Mm -hmm. So you don't do it for the money. You do mm -hmm. it because you like it okay. and you do it because you have time to do it. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Now, I want to speak a little bit about your heritage, sure. right? I think you spoke that in the intro, but add more to it. Mm -hmm. Where are your um, heritage and then um, your husband's heritage? Well? Sure. So when my... Right before my grandma died, I asked her because I really wanted to know. Mm -hmm. My heritage is very difficult, mm -hmm. but I think what I understand from it is that she is fully Ghanaian okay. and she married somebody who is Ghanaian and Togolese. So her husband's father mm -hmm. was Togolese okay. and she had to move back to where her husband's father come from because mm -hmm. that was tradition or mm -hmm. something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have Togolese roots. Okay. Yeah. And the Ghanaian as yes. well. Okay, wow, that's nice. With so your husband as well. Yes. So Ewe, so do you know how to speak some Ewe? <laughs> Not at all. Ewe. And my husband is uh, Ashanti. Yeah. Ashanti. Fully. Yeah. Oh, you can't speak any Ewe? No, not really. Ewe. Thank you, I'm fine. <laughs> I just don't know how to reach for I can well, hear little, little words, really? but it's so difficult. Wow. Yeah. Do you think um, it's a good decision for someone watching from the diaspora to move to Ghana? <laughs> <laughs> Be honest, because this channel, we are all about okay. honesty. I would never say it's not a good decision. Mm -hmm. It is so, so, so nice. Mm -hmm. But you need to plan. Strategically. Yeah, really plan. You, you can't, Ghana's not a country you just up and move to. No, mm -hmm. you plan it and then you'll be okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Has it been all worth it for you? Oh, definitely. I'll do it all over again. You woke up the next day, you want to take the flight. Yes. You realize everything you were dreaming was it, uh, it was just a dream. Yeah. It's not real. Yeah. Will you make the dream a reality? I'll go and buy my land in the brewery, mm -hmm. start building while I'm here. Wow. And then figure out the school situation later. Or maybe start my own school. Own school. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you it's for been an order. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Uh, it really means a lot to me. Thank you. And uh, viewers, she's Anna Echampo. The YouTube channel will be on the um, screen. Please go check her out. She's doing amazing on the continent. <laughs> Follow her uh, while she toured the whole of Africa. And uh, you would like it. You would never be disappointed. And yes, please like the video, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more amazing content uh, coming your way. And please, if you have your story to share, the email will be on the screen and also in the description. Send us an email if you want to share your story. We will come to you wherever you are. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And uh, let's say bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs>